Welcome to Commercial Real Estate Pro Network's CREPN Radio. Thanks for joining us. My name is J. Darren Gross. This is the podcast focused on commercial real estate investment and risk management strategies. Weekly, we have conversations with commercial real estate investors and professionals who provide their experience and insight to help you grow your real estate portfolio. Today, my guest is Joe Bell. Joe is a real estate and wealth expert coach. He's uh, been featured as one of Alaska's 39s. Uh, he's a top 40 under 40. And Joe Bell is an expert in helping real estate professionals build legacy, retirement, and wealth. He's the founder of Legacy Beyond Listings and the author of Assets, Acquisitions, and Abundance. And in just a minute, we're going to speak with Joe about how to focus on your market, build your team, and uh, create real wealth and freedom in your real estate business. But first, a quick reminder, if you like our show, CREPN Radio, there are a couple things you can do. You can like, share, and subscribe. And as always, we encourage you to leave a comment. We love to hear from our listeners. Also, if you'd like to see how handsome our guests are, be sure to check out our YouTube channel. And you can find us on YouTube at Commercial Real Estate Pro Network. While you're there, please hit the subscribe button. And uh, that really helps us out, helps the, um, the algorithms and uh, allows more people to find us. With that, I want to welcome my guest, Joe. Welcome to CREPN Radio. Darren, I appreciate it. I'm giggling over here because mom always said I had a face for radio. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's it's funny. The uh, you, you'll be just fine. Trust me. Trust me. Get the, <laughs> get the, you got a face that works for for YouTube as well. So oh, thank you. <laughs> but. Um, Hey, uh, Joe, I, I want to say again, uh, welcome and uh, looking forward to our talk. Uh, before we get started, if you could take just a minute and share a little about your background. Yeah, for sure. I, uh, I came out of the sports world. I was, I was supposed to be a professional baseball player. At least that's what I had in my mind um, until running into the hard truth that uh, I was not going to be that. And that came in my early 20s and I uh, didn't really know what to do. I fell back on a, uh, you know, just a natural characteristic of myself of coaching and through coaching uh, ended up running into a old dinosaur in the real estate industry at the time, you know, I'd spent 25 years in commercial real estate and I just kind of kept poking and prodding at him saying, Hey, get me into real estate, get me into real estate, get me into real estate. And finally he's like, all right, I'll let you into real estate. But first I need you to open this bar for me. <laughs> and I was like, Oh, well, as a young twenties, uh, that's right up my alley, uh, you know, kind of like every guy's dream in their young 20s or so I thought. Um, eight months later, uh, that, that dream had um, crashed <laughs> and I realized it was not what I wanted to be doing. Uh, we were able to have some fun, make some money, but ultimately counting money at 3.34 a.m. in the morning and then uh, waking up to receive um, uh, shipment at 9 a.m. It, it was a grind that was not worth it for me at that time. So I, I drug my, my tail between my legs back to the office and said, all right, get me into real estate. So uh, off I went, he gave me a, a phone book, piece of paper, a pencil and said, all right, start making some dials. So now this was back in 06, 07. So I grew up in a very uh, uh, challenging market, you know, because we ran into 08, 09 and um it, it proved to be very beneficial. I didn't realize how hard it was at the time. I was just figuring out how to make money. And uh, through doing so, when the tide ended up uh, rising once again, it took my boat with it. And all of a sudden I, I ran into um, you know, some success there. Uh, in 2009, I was about 29. I was a little bit of a late bloomer in regards to actually making money. And um, once I had once I had a taste of some of that success and saw how quickly it could grow, I, I just jumped in, you know, both feet and really ran hard at it. Uh, we purchased our first investment property in 09, which was also doubling as our, our primary home. Uh, we saw the ability to increase value and again was just another uh, glaring opportunity of, um, you know, an area that we could thrive in. And so we, we ran at the investment side of the business now that we had a little bit of uh, change in our pocket to work with. And um, from there, met an investor, 
they took us under their wing, kind of from me poking, prodding, pushing, and uh, and we ended up building a company with them that flips homes. That was uh, let's see, around 2014, and then for the past five years, we've been working at doing that and uh, have become investors along the way. So there you go. There's my my long and short. No, uh, that's awesome. Uh, you know, you mentioned the. Uh getting getting the keys to the bar uh, at 20 you're thinking you know woohoo and quickly <laughs> you realize that that's that's a tough that's a tough go i i yeah. uh, I'm, I'm glad that i had the the restaurant bar experience uh, in my youth but uh, i can't imagine doing that uh you know later on no but um cool so you you sought out a um, a real estate mentor is that kind of the the guy that you that that coached you along the way there? I did. It? Yeah. So <clears throat> the, the pieces that I don't really uh, highlight in that story are a lot of the failed attempts along the way, right? I failed in baseball. I failed at running a bar, I, you know, failed <laughs> so many in between. And uh, so what I've learned over the years is what I lack in talent, I make up for with persistence. And this was one of those scenarios where uh, I knew this particular investor worked with a uh, particular a licensee agent in our market, um, but I had a direct insight to him because uh, my girlfriend at the time, uh, it was her boss. And so naturally we just started building a relationship and you know, I, I kept just you know, kind of hounding him going, I wanna invest, I wanna become an investor. And um, slowly but surely, I think he started to see a piece of his younger self in me, in my girlfriend and I. And um, finally he gave me a call uh, late in the evening, uh, right around Christmas, I think it was 08, 09, somewhere in there, 09, 010. It doesn't really matter. But uh, yeah, at about nine o'clock, I showed up at a frozen fourplex. Uh, he told me to bring some boots. I put my boots on. We tromped into this crawl space that was filled with liquid. Uh, at the time, I didn't realize it was part human uh, sewage uh, along with frozen pipes. And, you know, I kind of took a step back, <laughs> standing amongst the sewage, going, yeah, this is exactly what I want to be, right? Like, this is where I want right. to be right now. And uh, from there, you know, we just, we, 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 we created a synergy that made sense because he had wisdom and resources and I had energy and desire. And, you know, it was rocket fuel, one of those scenarios. Um, and it just worked and we, we ran forward. Sweet. No, it's it's nice to uh, have some of the missing pieces appear that can help you uh, get to the next step there. So that's yep. cool. So you started out. Uh, you said he gave you kind of the phone book, uh, and and said you got calling. Were, were you calling on commercial real estate? Were you calling on uh, homeowners? What? Who were you calling? On? <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. To be honest, like sure. I had no idea. Right? I was I was just calling to try and talk to somebody about real estate. Um, and at the time I was more focused on commercial real estate. You know, one of the, one of the beauties about that, that entry into the industry, um, being commercial focused, I had always this, this dream of my first investment property being a, a 20 unit plus complex. And so, uh, because I didn't have any business, I filled my time with learning. And I mean, I'd stay up till like two, 3 AM in the morning just finding properties and then breaking them down financially and analyzing to figure out cap rates for whatever reason, like the numbers just made sense in my brain and uh, it was fun for me. And I was able to pick up on the language of real estate of commercial real estate specifically. And that helped me set myself apart because at the time there was, there, there was a group of, of younger uh, folks that were getting into commercial. Otherwise you had the old dogs that had been there and been doing it for a long time. So to, to have some fresh blood come along uh, the path and be able to speak the language, uh, it created an opportunity for a conversation further than just the initial cold call, right? So it was, hey, you know, this is Joe Bell with blank blank real estate, um, calling on your commercial building that you have, just wanted to see if you had thoughts about you know, potentially utilizing some of the equity that you had to purchase another property or, you know, if there were thoughts about selling in the future. I mean, you know, real, real easy, real casual conversation. Um, and then go right into, you know, exposing that you have a have an idea about what you're talking about, you know, at your current cap rate, you know, doesn't make sense to 
um, potentially sell that one off and you know get something new or utilize some of the equity in it. Uh, so we just we just spun it into a conversation any way we could at that point. I'm curious, you know, I, I, I'm a fan of cold calling. I've done it all my life. And, and You're I, the one. I say, well, no, I, I say a fan of it because I, I know that um, when when I've needed to, it's it's the one thing that kind of reconnects me with prospects. You know, yeah. if, if you're if you are in a waiting mode uh, for people to call, a lot of times the people that call aren't worth. I mean, they're not worth the effort kind of thing. It's like I, I, I found sure. that some of my best opportunities have come from me reaching out as opposed to the the inbound thing and i know it's not always true i don't want to make it sound like all the business that's come to me has not been worth doing but it seems like that that when i'm in the the in the outbound thing you know tr trying to generate some sort of rapport you've got that one little window there and if they listen to you and they, they stay on the phone and you find out there's an opportunity there um sometimes it can it can be a pretty sweet deal but i i, I I've, um, I know it's, it's, uh, it, it's exhausting. I'll say that. And I've learned oh, yeah. since that to, to uh, I've hired out a lot of the, the outbound calls just to keep, keep me fresh when I am talking to people that are looking to buy, but, right. but, um, well, it's, it's one of those things. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, it is, it is challenging and you have to find a way to create, you know, vigor around it, some, some life within it, have some fun with it. Um, and it's, it's harder and harder because people just look at telemarketers, right, as trash, and they're very, very mean, very short, very quick. Um, so you do have to figure out a, a different approach in that sense. But um, one of my mentors, one of my really good friends, Jennifer Toomer, um, she used to quote uh, somebody that she had heard it from, but it was something along the lines of there's no financial challenge that you can't solve um, uh, in making 20 phone calls a day. Like, Basically, if you just, you know, 20 contacts, whatever that number is, uh, if you just focus on that, that will carry you out of whatever challenge you're experiencing. And uh, it's, it's very obvious in the real estate industry, but I, I think it applies in many other industries as well, right? You're, you're technically only one conversation away from completely changing your trajectory of where you at to where you potentially want to be by focusing on contacts, conversations, and you know, bringing into uh, life uh, within those conversations, what opportunities lie that neither party is uh, able to see right here, right now in front of them. Right, right. No, and I think there's there's definitely ways to be more productive than just complete random, you know, uh, strangers. Right. And I think that one of the things I, I remember uh, when I when I last time I actively did it was just the kind of kind of hone the the you know, the message or whatever it is to where it's a little bit more inviting for a response as opposed to re, you know, getting rejected. And just to me, there was some sort of building to it. And like, you know, said in, in the numbers, all of sales is numbers. And the more opportunities you, you know, the more doors you knock on, the more opportunities you're going to receive kind of thing. So, yeah. but um, no, I, 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 I'm, I'm just a fan of uh, learning that way too. I, I've talked to many people. And in fact, like you were saying today, most people kind of screen their calls. I found that the few people that do answer their phones are almost surprised if you have something you know, legitimate as opposed to uh, some sort of recording about, you know, you, you've, one of your friends or family recommended that I call, you know, about something. But um, Right, right. If you, if you can't hear the chatter of other callers in the background, right, or it's not right. a voice me message, right, you kind of go, oh, wait. <laughs> sounds like a real person, person yeah. <laughs> yeah no uh, that's good so l let's continue here so you you uh, got kind of i mean you got oriented you got a, a mentor you got some a little bit of training you got some uh you were learning the lingo which i think is a big part of uh you know creating credibility with uh commercial real estate investors so were, were you having in success that, that uh, were you listing properties, selling properties, leasing properties? What, what was your, your Yeah, so this, um, was, this was more on the, the sales side, the transactional right. side. Um, and yeah, I was having some success. I wasn't having a lot, to be honest. Uh, and there was one transaction that actually kicked me out of commercial real estate. I'd been working on this transaction for six months. We got legitimately to the table to sign and buyer walked. Right. So uh, seller got the earnest money of $10,000. 
and I watched my commission of 38,000, I think it was just gone. Go, go out the door and, with the seller, yeah, or the buyer. Yeah, it was, <clears throat> that one was a tough one. Uh, at that time, I, I hadn't been making a lot of money. I'd been learning the ropes of real estate. Uh, my girlfriend was at the time paying for uh, my portion of rent uh, in any given month. And it was, it was a really hard uh, thing to go through. And I'm glad I went through it because it, it helped me focus. It helped me see, you know, the path of more on the residential side, because that's what it did. It was like, oh crap, I have to figure out how to make money as quick as possible here. And residential just turned a little quicker. So I jumped over into that side of it and I, I found that it paid more often, more frequent, not as big a you know, slice of pie, but uh, it was something that was, I could see, okay, here, this, this one's 30, 45 days down the line. And here are the specific activities uh, because there's a lot more homes than there are commercial properties. And um, that somehow uh, delineated a lot of competition uh, in my brain. It was like, oh, wow, I can run after so many of these Whereas I'm facing, you know, the 25 year old or the 25 year uh, vets in the business over on these commercial properties at the time. I mean, I know I look like a baby now, but I really look like a baby, right? Going and talking to somebody about uh, the security of their, their uh, future retirement uh, was a little bit more of a challenge. So the houses were easy. The residential side was easier. And I just found a natural groove as I moved over to that side of it. Um, and, and then it was, you know, it's almost like the matrix coming together where, uh, the market hit, I started seeing it different income increased. And from there it was, okay, now's the opportunity to go in and start, <clears throat> excuse me, start personally investing. Got it. So you, you mentioned that, uh, you, there was an investor that, uh, came along, uh, and it sounded like you guys partnered and were doing flips. Yep. Um, Tell me about what, what, and are you still doing the flips? Uh, yeah, at this point, we've now taken part in almost each sort of investment opportunity that has come across our, our desk. Um, we're heavy into a development now currently. So flipping homes is, is almost second nature. It's just part of what we do. Um, it, I would say it's probably more of our bread and butter because we've done so many now and we're comfortable with them. Um, so, but yeah, the, at the time, uh, th these individuals, so it was a, it was a couple, they were shoot. I want to say they were in their mid, mid to late sixties at that point. And here we were, we were in our, you know, late twenties, early thirties. And <clears throat> again, they just kind of took us under our, under their wing and, uh, they had the resources. We had the energy, we had the, the vision and the analysis that they were looking for in doing flips, in doing these projects. And it, it just married well, you know, and it, it took a little bit of coercing, but, um, you know, after, after really building the relationship, getting to know them, um, they became very important people in our lives. They're now the uh, godparents of my daughter. I, it, this was just a, a conversation that I kept persisting with and it turned into something be very beautiful, very amazing. And they've now since retired, they sold off all of their assets uh, here this last year and they uh, moved down to Washington and are, are in retirement mode. Gotcha. Well, the, the uh, again, you know, you, you, you learned, you kind of grinded, you, you, you found, um, um, a teammate, if you will, your, your investor partner there. Sounds like you guys, uh, um, you know, did quite a few homes. So, so let's talk about where you, you found and, and, and the success that followed, I guess. Um, you know, the, the thing that I, I read uh, for the, um, the uh, introduction there is about blowing up your, or not blowing up, but the, the uh, focusing on your market and, you know, building out your team and, and creating uh, real wealth. Um, to this point, it, it sounds like you were really kind of focused on a particular market um, based on, I'm assuming, has all of this happened in the same same market? Yeah. All of your experience? Uh, I'm born and raised in my market, so I have a little bit of a competitive advantage in that regard. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> even though I never really paid attention to real estate or homes or <laughs> buildings growing up. Uh, 
But uh, yeah, now that I'm, I, I'm you know, a, a seasoned vet of 15 years in this market, I know it inside and out for the most part, and it's very easy for me to analyze. So there's my, there's my competitive advantage, right? Um, but more, it's time on task. Time on task has uh, allowed me to set myself apart in, in the investment side and being able to analyze and understanding the numbers, understanding the costs, understanding timeframes and how to put all the pieces together. That's been pure time on task over time has now, you know, uh, allowed us to um, become just a, a different, a little bit of a different machine in that regard, because we, we know what we're doing. We can do it very quick. And, um, you know, it's just something that we've, we've learned over the years. So uh, part of that is in building the team. So I wrote a book, it's Assets, Acquisitions, and Abundance. It's on Amazon. There's my little pitch for, to get it out of the way. Um, <clears throat> in that, what we do is, is I talk about assets and highlighting what your personal assets are, not in what you own, not a business, not a piece of property, but what your strengths are, right? In defining those strengths and understanding those strengths and focusing on utilizing those strengths and then where you can look for assistance and leverage and, and help in, um, in your market, in your network specifically. So we talk about uh, understanding your assets in order to go find the assets and acquire those assets through utilization of not only your strengths, but other strengths as well. And uh, it's been very surprising to understand how, how many different resources we have in our immediate network. And it's just a matter of you know, becoming a resource yourself so that you create this attraction towards the real estate investing, uh, you know, side of your world. And as a result, people start raising their hands going, hey, yeah, I have a construction background. I've wanted to get into flipping. Uh, yeah, I've got a bunch of resources. I want to, you know, do some investing because the stock market scares the crap out of me right now. You know, and you just, you, you don't understand until you ask the question and you start digging into some of these conversations more what sort of opportunity there is, who, uh, who you have in your network, the resources that are available. And, you know, ultimately, then it all comes back to, you know, dealing with your, your market and being a part of your market in order to create that attraction. No market familiarity and, and expertise is, um, you know, we'll, we'll pay spades. I mean, as far as the, the dividends, um, right you know, and, and just having that, that carnal knowledge here. Um, let me ask you though about the uh, team members um, in, in the way you're doing it. Uh, who, who are some of the, the key members of your team and what do they do? Yeah. So I'm, I'm more on the acquisition and negotiation side. I love negotiating. That's, that's my favorite part of the, you know, it's the, it's almost the art of the deal, right? It's the chase. Um, that for me is, is the, uh, that, that's my, that's my area. That's where I, you know, kind of control everything else. <laughs> I, I can find, uh, leverage points in that regard. So, um, you know, we've been working with the same contractor for, for quite a while and we're starting to open open up to other contractors as we continue moving forward to create a, a bigger part of the team. And, when you do find that, you know, that general, if you, if you can find that individual, then you create a, you know, a form of leverage for all the subs in handling different uh, specifics of the flip itself. So, you know, in, in continuing to search, continuing to have conversations and highlight who's great at the construction contracting side of the world, um, that's, a, that's a really big part of it. And that doesn't come very easy. Uh, it, it, that's another time on task ritual where you just have to continue having the conversations and top grading, you know, when you, when you come across some of those, those higher talented individuals. So, um, that's a really big, uh, that's a really big chunk of what we do, uh, the resources. So a lot of our investors, uh, <clears throat> you know, cause for me, I don't have to, I don't have to have the biggest piece of the pie. I don't have to have all the pie. I just want a piece of the pie in order to, um, you know, it, again, going back to the title of my book, Asset, Assets, Acquisitions, and Abundance, this is where the abundance play comes in. And it's really grabbing folks that are interested, grabbing folks that have special strengths that I don't, and bringing them along 
with us and most of the time actually grabbing onto their coattails and going along for the ride and the trajectory that they're already on. So uh, in finding resources, you know, the investor network is a big part of what we've been able to build over the years. And, you know, I can't even say that. It's not over the years. It is in the last probably 24 months, 24 to 30 months since we uh, sh closed shop on our investment flipping business. And we've now carried this on our own forward, um, really being able to understand and know where your funds are, give you a different era of confidence when going out and looking at acquisitions. So, um, so on the repair side, you have, you know, a party or parties that can handle that piece. And on the the resource side, you have the uh, financial ability and confidence to know that, um, you know, ultimately you can go and find the money if the deal's good enough to, you know, go and squeeze it. Got it. Uh, you were talking about the money. What, uh, how, are, how are you structured as far as your uh, capital? Um, so <laughs> it, it all depends. It depends on where we're at. So we've got a, a development going and we've got you know, roughly about $600,000 in that development. And, you know, we have another, um, we have another, actually two flips that are coming up and we're just utilizing different private resources. Uh, we haven't really gotten to a bank. We don't do any home equity line of credits or a line of credit or uh, 203k loans or anything along those lines. We are working with folks that come out of our network and are interested in participating and we offer them, uh, you know, a couple of different structures. And one of my favorite is to guarantee a certain percent uh, of return on their money, as much as you can guarantee uh, on an investment, right, and a, a risk. Uh, and then beyond that, we split profits. So, uh, you know, it makes them feel comfortable with knowing that bare minimum, we're working towards their return. And if we do what we say we're good at and we know how to do, then we're going to participate in those profits on the back end as well. So uh, it just, it kind of depends on the, on the project and, and how we structure it and what the, uh, what the party's looking for that we're working with. Yeah. Is no, that what you I, were asking? <laughs> yeah, no, I, okay. absolutely. Just, you know, the, yep. the, the money, there's always a little, somebody's got to have the money in the, the deal there. I mean, it doesn't right. matter how you, how you get it, but uh, it's one of the things I always love about real estate is, um, you know, it's, you can be as creative as, the parties that are involved are willing to, to be. So that's good. Right. Um, so you mentioned basically you're on the acquisition, you've got a contractor. Um, is there any, and then the investors, is there anybody else that, that uh, you, you rely on to, to help you get out the word and find opportunities and, and, uh... um, you know, I mean, social media has been really, really good for us. Uh, every now and again, we'll put on a little, you know, investment seminar. I mean, we've done enough now with social media that uh, folks know that we are in the acquisition game. We are in the investment game. And so once in a while, we'll just say, hey, we're, we're holding a very, you know, private um, meeting where we'll present what we do. And if you're interested in participating, come and join us, right? And those have been very successful in highlighting the who uh, we can participate with in some of these. And most of the time, most of the time, it's it's purely just financial that comes out of that. We haven't really found, you know, uh, a level of talent in regards to any of the construction side or, uh, you know, special knowledge side of things. Uh, but uh, it does create the opportunity to continue building out that network and creating another uh, resource, you know, to scale, to expand if we wanted to really push on it. Gotcha. So... Uh, for the listeners that are, are um, you know, considering uh, either they're in, in a market or looking to have greater success in their market, um, what are some tips that you could uh, provide or, or share that would help them, you know, grow and, and uh, help create more uh, real estate wealth? Yeah, so there's, there's really two things that I like to focus on when I get this question. And the first one is just becoming the resource. So if you're, if you're new, if you don't have a lot you know, under your belt, then becoming the resource really allows you to uh, create an attraction, right? So, so a couple of steps, go find you know, five podcasts like yours, go find five blogs, go find five websites, go find just 
information resources and then share that with your community. And by doing so, you're, you're doing two things. One, you're showing that you can be a resource for really great content. And two, you're supporting somebody else's efforts, right? And the energy that they're putting in. So you're organically growing, you know, that side of the universe. And by doing so, if you do enough of really strong content sharing, then ultimately you'll start to create this attraction back towards you. And it's, it's just a very simplistic approach to um, becoming the source. So when people think about real estate investing, they can go, oh, you know what? Darren does real estate invest. Oh, wait, he has a podcast, right? And so they think of you because everything that you do should be focused around how do you uh, carve a uh, percentage of their mind for you and you becoming that one that they think of when it comes to real estate specific, right? So that's, that's one real easy way to, to go about it. And the second is just to have conversations, you know, just, to, you know, if, if I was, if I was looking to learn or looking to uh, connect with, uh, you know, high talent or folks that have done investing or, you know, gain a level of knowledge that I don't have, then I would give you a call there and I would say, Hey, Darren, I'm really focused on real estate investing. Um, do you have anybody like a, like a top three that I would, uh, potentially be able to reach out to, to talk to them about real estate investing. Right. And I, I just shut up at that point and see what your response is. This is a high contact sport. You, you have to either be, you know, focusing on contacts with, uh, individuals that can join your network, can help find different opportunities, um, or know somebody that might have an opportunity. And, and that's really all this is, right? It's just continuing to have the conversation because you never know where a conversation is going to lead you. Yeah, no, I, I love that. And, and I think the thing that I would um, add just in, in thinking about it is, is that the, the conversation doesn't necessarily have to have an end point like, you know, you're, you're trying to get them to invest or, or whatever, but just having those conversations and asking questions and listening, I... Um, I'm always amazed by the, um, and I've been guilty of this too, so I don't want to make it sound like I'm not, <laughs> not part of it, but, but the lack of success when, when I'm so trying to, you know, uh, get somebody to, or I'm putting, I'm giving them all this information and I haven't even found out, you know, might they be interested, um, you know, before I'm, I'm, I'm giving them all this information. So no, I think that's, that's, right. that's great stuff. I appreciate that. Um, I want to ask you quick about uh, financial freedom. Yep. Um, how do you define it? And uh, how do you, when, when you're working with others, what do your, how do you have, how do you measure that? Yeah. So, right. This is, this is almost the same question of what is success to you, right? Cause success is different for everybody. Financial freedom is different for everybody. Uh, and so financial freedom to me is uh, being able to make the choices that you want to make when you want to make them is really what it comes down to. Now, we don't, uh, I, I can be very, uh, uh, very transparent here and say that we don't always get to make those choices based on some of the other decisions we've made in regards to uh, financial decisions and investment decisions, right? This is a, it's an ebb and flow on our way to get to that point where you have total, complete financial freedom, right? To make the choice that you want to make when you want to make it. Um, but there are times where you go, you know what, I'm going to sink this chunk of money because I see the opportunity. And as a result, I've got to go and make up, right? It's, it's almost like um, uh, a lot of business owners out there where, you know, they have a successful business, but talk to them about, uh, a cash flow or talk to them about getting a loan through a bank, right? There's a lot of challenges that I run into in those conversations with folks that, you know, they're, they're really producing, but they're not quite to the level where financial freedom has, has graced their presence, right? So um, when, we're, when we're talking with folks, it is more a matter of stripping down the layers to go, really, what do you want, you know? And at the, at the base level, I, I I run into folks just really want to be of value. They want to figure out their value and they want to be of value. So where can we help them live in a world that 
they feel like they are of value and offering value. Um, whether that's financial freedom, right? Or whether that is really hitting their groove of, um, you know, finding joy in their life because they are of value and, and are able to spread that value, you know, amongst their, their resources and network, I should say. No, that's, that's good stuff. Hey, Joe, if we could, I'd like to shift gears here for a second. Um, by day, I'm an insurance broker and uh, I work with my clients to assess risk and determine uh, what to do with the risk. And there's, there's typically three strategies uh, I point to and, and ask my clients to consider. Uh, the first we, is we ask, can we avoid the risk? Uh, if we can avoid it, then the risk doesn't, doesn't uh, affect us. Um, if that's not an option, then we look to see if we can minimize the risk and uh, what steps we can, we can take. And uh, if we're not able to avoid nor minimize the risk, then we look to see if we can transfer the risk. And that's what an insurance policy is. It's a, a risk transfer vehicle. And I like to ask my guests if they can look at their own situation. This could be your clients, investors, tenants, the market. It's a blank slate, you get to define it. But if you could take a look at your situation and identify what you consider to be the biggest risk. And uh, again, for clarification, I'm, I'm not necessarily looking for an insurance um, related answer. But uh, if you're willing, I'd like to ask you, Joe Bell, what is the biggest risk? Yeah, well, an insurance related answer is sometimes a really good step, but beyond that, right? Um, you know, the, <clears throat> some of the biggest risk is, is when you, you think you know it all, right? You get to that point where uh, you, you reach the pinnacle. And as soon as you uh, start to feel like you're there um, is uh, one of the biggest opportunities to actually get swept off the mountain. Uh, I think a lot of us out there, I, I, I know myself experienced that when COVID hit and we lost $900,000 in investment, uh, it, it quite frankly just caught a lot of people with their pants down, myself included. And I was, I was to a point where I felt like, you know, I was doing pretty well and I knew uh, quite a bit of, of uh, what there was to know out there, but uh, it was a humbling moment where I had to take a step back and go, no, we're not even close, right? So. Um, you know, the biggest risk is to get to that point and stop learning, stop progressing, stop evolving, uh, both as an investor and as a human. Um, you know, so uh, that, that to me is one of the biggest risks outside of all your uh, general pitfalls that typical new investors run into and, you know, uh, trying, to, trying to do stuff before they really know what they're doing in that sense. So yeah, for me, uh, it, it probably applies to a more seasoned uh, individual that has been around the game for a little while, but um, there, is, there is no pinnacle. It's a continual evolution and just focusing on that. I think that's, that's uh, some words of wisdom there. It's good stuff. <laughs> hard-earned um, wisdom, I guess. <laughs> yeah, school of hard knocks. I mean, you know, it's, I, I remember uh, growing up, my parents were, were not... Uh, they didn't hover. Uh, they would let me make mistakes, and and uh, you know they always said, "Well, I could have told you that, but then you wouldn't learn." So I was like, "Well, right. okay." So I've got the battle scars. Sage, that is sage advice, right? <laughs> yeah, but um, anyway, uh, Joe, where can the listeners go if they'd like to learn more or connect with you? Yeah, so our website, LegacyBeyondListings.com. Uh, Legacy Beyond Listings was, was initially, it initially came about for real estate professionals specifically that, um, you know, I just wanted uh, to drive the point home for them to focus on uh, the real estate side of the world for themselves uh, because I, I had a lot of conversations running a billion dollar brokerage in the mid uh, 2014, 2015. Um, where I, I didn't find a lot of those individuals setting themselves up for wealth for the future. And so I put this, this website together and I realized this doesn't just apply to real estate professionals. This is everyone. 
So legacybeyondlistings.com. Uh, I've got a link that folks can uh, schedule some time with me, which is which is purely just that, right? It's purely just a conversation. I used to do the coaching thing, but uh, really have progressed beyond, um, not in a negative sense, but just as I, I just want to find a way to help people. And if it's a conversation, then great. You know, sign up for a conversation, right? In that regard, there's also a, um, a case study that they can download there. Uh, or if they want to send me an email directly, I'm joe at joebell.life, L I F as in Frank E. Got it. Joe, I can't say thank you enough for taking the time to talk. I've uh, enjoyed our conversation, uh, learned a lot, and uh, hope we can do it again soon. Yeah, no worries. Uh, the pleasure is all mine. I really appreciate the opportunity, Darren. So thank you. All right. For our listeners, if you like this episode, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Remember, the more you know, the more you grow. That's all we've got this week. Until next time, thanks for listening to Commercial Real Estate Pro Network's CREPN Radio.